and the nature and power of Allah, the master of spiritual insight and perceivable of all truths. I rise to give all praise to due to Allah, and I give honor to his holy and illustrious prophet, Noah Jawali. He's an angel training court, angel and training association of North American production. Today, 527-2015, building on the concept and consciousness of nationality. Cancel the at the uh, venue where I hosted at, because you know I do pay for that, and it wasn't too many people coming through. So I said, you know what? I just build with the five percent. And uh, we're here now. I'm still on 125th. You can catch us. We're not on Madison. Um, we're not on Madison on 125th in the Uptown Juice Bar. You find us in Jai Lookover. You gonna find us in Harlem in a in a place that's owned by our people before anything. Um, we're gonna start off with the definition of corporation so that we can understand what the differences between the corporation and the country is from the legal standpoint as well as in the colloquial conversation standpoint and that we can apply the concept of corporations so that we know that they're not a negative uh, entity or something to be uh, something to look at with a negative light but something that can actually be used um, for positive purposes as well as an integral part of American society. So we're going to um, check out corporation first in the American Heritage Dictionary from two, the year 2000, American Heritage College Dictionary. All the uh, doctors and men of letters out there uh, MDs and MS and Ds and Ds and people with their BS, Bachelor of Science, uh, Corporation. It was just here, wait. <laughs> a body that is granted a charter legally recognizing it as a separate legal entity. Corporation, a body that is granted a charter legally recognizing it as a separate legal entity What's a charter? Having its own rights, that's a beautiful question Having its own rights, privileges, and liabilities Distinct from those of its members. A charter is a document granting authority, and authority is the uh, capacity to act within a jurisdiction. We're going to look up a, a dictionary definition just so that we can have a, you know, just so that we can have a concrete or definite understanding. Uh, dictionaries are supposed to take the guesswork out of language. That's how the first English dictionary was manufactured in 1828 uh, by Noah Webster. He had to create that English dictionary because, you know, they, the Europeans just they'd speak a gibberish. And they'd be like, well, this word means this, no, this word means this. You said this, and that this means that, so that means it's like, nah. The trader made an interpretation that he would receive more gold for his labor, more than he would earn in his own country. Did he receive the gold? What's so, up? trader disappeared. There's no one left to speak his own language. So, we speak a language of communication, and we speak another um, exchange of energy. We gotta know what it is that we're talking about, and we need definite values ascribed to the ledgers or the representative uh, objects of value. Just like a dollar bill, a, a bill with a dollar on it, that defines as a dollar. No, well a dollar could be 250, nah my man. Nah, you see I have a whole different spin on the whole dollar thing. I don't care, a dollar's a dollar. Nationality is nationality. Corporation is a corporation. And a word is a word. And if people don't agree with the definitions, they need to speak a different language. A charter. 
One. Always find a place. A document issued by a sovereign, comma, legislature, comma, or up or other authority, comma, creating a public or private corporation. Listen in, such as a city, college, or uh huh. Document issued by sovereign legislation or other authority for what? Creating a public or private corporation. Such as a city, college, or bank, and listen to this, and defining its privileges and purposes. In layman's term, or in plain English, a charter is the paper breaking down whatever institution you have, what it does, and what it's for. So for example, um, you want to create a, a restaurant. You want to create a restaurant. And uh, you, know, you want your restaurant charters because it's a uh, part and parcel of your uh, religious organization. So you want to create a charter defining the purposes of the restaurant to feed our people who serve the religion, to feed the, um, uh, to feed the underserved and the impoverished, the hungry after a certain time, and uh, to give the people in the community employment. The privileges, you know, uh, for example, non-taxable or tax exemption, or, um, you know, the ability to uh, have some type of tax benefit on the given okay. people grants in the community, or, um, you know, the privilege would be getting a, a, a kickback on, you know, the amount of energy that you use because it would be on for so long, considering that the, you know, the neighborhood after a certain time may require, you know, food in certain areas and uh, that organization may be willing to provide. Like we over here on 25th and our religion is Islam, which is peace. And we find it that, you know, we need to have make sure the whole Harlem in peace. And so, you know, we're gonna go to 145th Street. So we maybe have to open till, be open till 1 a.m. You know what I'm saying? We might get a kickback on the energy because the state sees that we're working within the confines of the United States of America in order to provide the citizens of America, which is you and I, um, what is secured in the Constitution, which is um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, liberty being freedom, the fourth principle and more science. And um, then the pursuit of happiness being the uh, the conclusion to everything that we work for, because everything that we, you know, the economy of human life, you know, the study of our life should be happiness. And so the whole point of us learning is everything that we do here and doing, putting all this that we, uh, putting in all this work that we're putting in is to have a happiness socially and economically. You know, we want to be comfortable in our pockets. Politically, we want to be well represented, you know, and so. Bringing that back to what a charter is, a charter is going to explain what it is that we're trying to do and what so everybody, you know what I'm saying? And this, this is all this is the way we're gonna pursue our happiness. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and we're not hurting nobody, we're not infringing on nobody's life, liberty, we're not uh, you know, except for the devil, we not, you know, imposing upon everybody, anybody pursuit of happiness. And you know, that's gonna be respected because it was given by a, a sovereign a legislature or other authority. So we know a sovereign is one who holds absolute power. A legislature would be like, you know, a body of grant writing people. And citizens are grant writing people. Then we'd have um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, when we were, when, when you write laws as, you know, legislators, you know, you have, like, elected officials be legislators, but you also have lobbyists, but it all starts with the community, the community comes together, they know what laws apply to their community at that time, and they're able to exercise those laws and then impose those laws until they have an actual order to it. And the actual order to it is known as the legislature or the Senate or, you know, things of that nature, the legislative body or branch of government, for example. Now, the second definition for charter is a written grant from the sovereign power of a country. Of a country. Not a corporation. Of a country. Conferring certain rights and privileges on a person, a corporation, or the people. For example, the Charter of the Angel Training Academy in North America, right? The Charter of the Angel Training Academy states that we in the state of New York, we can convene as many times as we want, as much as possible, in order to train our people to be angels, which are messengers, and spread it out to the four corners of North America, including Canada and Mexico, for those que hablamos español y podemos hablar con otra gente. And for those who speak French, they can go into Canada and speak to our people, because our people were the originators of the French language anyway, which is why France is, French is spoken here and over there by our people, as well as in the Caribbean. You know what I'm saying? And so, let's go into, um... Country, right quick, since country is... Right. Country, 1A, a nation or a state. Now, in the American Dictionary, nation and country are synonymous. But we know legally that's not right and exact. You know what I'm saying? We already showed and proved that two weeks in a row when it said that a nation was the people and that the country was the actual portion of the earth inhabited by the people. People don't inhabit themselves. I mean, not for too long anyway. People die. I'm saying, so, <laughs> we ain't like right now, this nation is inhabited by so many other nations that our nation is now stateless. So now we're a nation in a foreign country. Well, what happened to our former country? So it's like the nation fell. Yeah, the nation fell, but the country no longer around. I mean, the nation no longer around? Radically, no. We all sitting right here, sitting there right now. We ain't disappeared. The Moors after 1492, they ain't just disappeared, they ain't just write them out of history. You know where they went? They went to the Bronx. Okay. Anyway, they say Islam Islam. 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 They're going to tell you something about saying right here. Say right here. Let me, let me see. Right no, people right got to walk there too, though. So they might see. It's all right. It's not going to work. Thank you, boy, style, right? <laughs> well, God, this is Try right there, God. Sit right here. Right. Are you getting good? Thank you, bro. <laughs> all right. So. Country. Two, the territory of a nation or state. Semicolon land. Now, um, that was actually a 1B. The second definition for country is actually the land of a person's birth or citizenship. The land of a person's birth or citizenship. So you don't have to be born in the United States of America to be considered as a, a citizen of the United States of America. If you're born in China, you're not Chinese. 
We were born in America, though. You're American. Because we can tax you now. As soon as you're American. So it's convenient. In this country, as soon as you're born, you become a citizen. Even if you're not from here. Well, you know, what if one's from China and the other one's from Mexico and you're born here and so you got rights to the land? Because everybody has the ability to claim what we're not. So somebody can go from Mexico over to here. They can't even claim their own indigenous land in Mexico, but they'll come out here and they'll claim Moorish land, Moorish territory. People who come from Canada, not that they do off. But they'll come from Canada and claim one claim stuff out here and put it under a Canadian name. So they paying Canadian taxes on American territory, but they citizens, they dual citizens. And they know how to deal with the law because they know citizenship so well that they're citizens of two countries and exercise the citizenship of the change of So when it's convenient, they're American. Until then, you know, Canadian, you're saying Mexicano. I'm saying, nah, you don't say Americano until that check come. And it look crazy, it look like 1450. You're like, God bless America. While, you know, everybody else, they got $14.50. Like, man, America, black power, yeah, we need a bag. And it's like, nah, it's not working out. Because everybody else comes from another country and exercises their nationality via citizenship. Now, ship, right, is what? There's a tool of transportation, right? Let's look up ship right quick. Just because I don't do all the really metaphysical and like making words and sound good and do the word playing. I, 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 and do the shuffle with word. I'm not already like that because when people start making stuff up, like ish means something like. And you can't find that in no dictionary, B. So it's not right and exact. Well, well you know, ish is uh, Hebrew for man. I didn't ask you. You're speaking English. English. You're talking about prefixes and suffixes? Yeah, prefixes and suffixes. People don't... Uh, you know what I'm saying? But a ship is definitely, you know, a method of transportation. So citizenship is how you navigate your navigation and relation. What is, nat what is nationality? It's only two. A, a legal what? Relationship. Relationship. What do you mean? It's early still. A legal relationship between person and state. Relationship. That ship. Uh, relationship. Citizen. Citizen. Ship. Yeah, man, and you know, Negro, Black, and Color, those are some strange ships to be on. That's some strange ships right there. Ship, a vessel of considerable size for deep water navigation. No, I'm recording it now, so I'm good, thank you. you sure? Yeah, I'm recording it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> thank you. Ship, as a suffix, 1A, quality, quality state, or condition? Different parts of the name. Ship. <laughs> that's not the noun, not that's just the suffix. That's the suffix. Like receivership, oh. partnership. Oh. Yeah. Citizenship, relationship, membership. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 1B, something that shows or possesses a quality, state, or condition. Something that shows or possesses a quality, state, or condition. Watch this. The second definition. Rank, status, or office. Hmm. Now we know citizenship, you're holding a political office. A political office is that of a person. 
a person is one with the legal capacity of a of a citizen. Because if you're not a person, you're not recognized by law. Person, but there's different kinds of persons. A person can also be a corporation. A person is a corporation. A corporate entity. Because when we look up person in the dictionary, that's a good person in the dictionary. You look up, somebody look a person in the dictionary. I want to see, you already know, I wanted to see somebody's face. You know what I'm saying? Because after you get past the human being, you know, it starts going into... See, one of the things that I always wondered about before understanding is why did the nation of Islam say that Allah came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad? And I'm like, in the person? Dang, what that mean? Allah came in the legal representative entity of Master Farah Muhammad? So then that means the law comes with many persons, many legal representative capacity. That's how I check profit is a representative capacity. So it's messenger. I heard that there is no God but Allah. I heard that, uh, that there is none worthy of praise but Allah. They turn around and his messenger's name means worthy of praise. So I'm just trying to put two and two together. Oh, hey. Worthy of praise, Allah is the only one worthy of praise. The kind of relationship that Muhammad had with Allah. Allah was the method of transportation of sending the messages back and forth, the angel, Jibreel. How do you deal with the country and what's your relationship with the country? How do you send messages back and forth with the country? How in tune are you with the country? Do you legally represent the country and will the country legally represent you? But you can't legally represent the country unless you're a barrister. You know what I'm saying? And they license you for that. And it's very hard to sue the very hard to sue the government. Like it's not easy. You can't just like, Isn't the government, government sovereign? Well, I mean it's the government does have certain aspects of sovereign power and jurisdiction, you right. know what I'm saying, through the you know, the territories and what the actual collective is compromised of like with the United States. Right. You know what I mean? But so it would require like a sovereign entity to sue the sovereign it, it still functions in a corporate capacity acknowledging its distance from it. That's why through citizenship they acknowledge you as a corporate entity to do the same for you. Right. They don't want you exercising that same ability. Right. You know? Because they have to make a difference between man and a law. Right. American, America. Like how my grand sheik said, that was fire. He said, you a drop in the ocean. So now you the ocean? Because you came back to the ocean? Now you a drop in the ocean. Yeah, you part of the ocean, but you're not the ocean. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's why, you know, like not for nothing, just to get personal. You know, a lot of people see what I do and they like, yo, you know, you represent the whole ocean. I'm like, yo, this is, I'm a drive. You know what I'm saying? If it's convenient there, then it's convenient here. So now I'm a drive too. So let's not act like I represent the entire ocean or like I get along with the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. And it's, uh, it's six other different oceans out there. And we all a drop. And all of those waters are connected because it's 139 million, 685,000 square miles of water. You know what I'm saying? So let's not just act like we're only here in America. We in Central America and Mexico too. We in South America. We in all the Caribbean islands. We in the Northwest and South of the shores of Africa. We in Western Europe. We in Eastern Europe. We're in Northern Europe. We're in Southern Europe. We're in Central Europe. We're in Asia. You know what I'm saying? Just a drop in the ocean. Now how that drop relates to the rest of the ocean depends on its medium of travel it should usually be the hydrologic cycle or the water cycle what makes rain help snow and earthquakes what's that definition okay well the first definition they give you is person a living being or a living human being often use the combination chairs person spokesperson salesperson and then you know they tell you how to you know, cite the usage but in the sixth definition they say a human being or an organization uh-huh with legal rights and duties with legal rights and duties so you see I want to just the person can also be corporate I want to know uh, the second definition a person is an individual of specified character 
Nationality is that quality or character that arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or a state. So, an individual or specified character. Now, a nation is known as a person with a will of its own. Vettel says she has her affairs in order. Her is a, that's a, that's a first, you don't call inanimate objects. Hey, I mean, pardon, you don't call inanimate objects he or she, unless you're using personification. And what you're seeing, like, I mean, they give it to you six definitions down, but there's a difference between what you would figure colloquial speech and then legalese. Because in the legalese, they give you a more strict uh, definition of how those, it's like a person's capacity to function. And that's pretty much what we deal with through citizenship in the United States of America. They recognize you, the human person, but through your citizenship and the amendments, they assign you certain privileges and ex they assign you certain uh, uh, duties, if you will, to your citizenship through the corporate person. And they actually give you the responsibilities of carrying out those duties. You know, it's called due process. The ninth definition of person is a character or role, as in a play, a guise, idiom, in person, and one's physical presence, personally. We see nine is a character or role in the person of Master Farrar, in the person of a Moorish American. So, if you're not a member of the Moorish Science Temple of America, no matter how you feel, no matter what your emotional, how your heart feels, flutters, butterflies in your stomach, whatever. You're not a member, you're not in the person.